about our co-hosts today. We're very excited to have with us the anchor team from WCBS-TV, a good friend, Maurice Dubois. And for those of you who have never gotten to meet the lovely Kate Sullivan, we do welcome her today. Thank you so much. We are thrilled to be here. What? We have to follow Helen Thomas. But aren't you glad you don't have to answer questions <laughs> yes, from, from her. Helen Thomas? Yes. Thank goodness for Helen Thomas I know. that she asked those presidents all those tough questions. I mean, thank you, Helen, for reminding us why we do what we do. Man, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a privilege to be here with you today. It is. And not, not, only for her, not only for her persistence and her talent, but for what she's been able to do for women in journalism, too. Not only did she give you know, women a front row in the White House, she really gave them a front row in journalism. Oh, so no for any woman who's involved in journalism, uh, a huge thanks and a lot of love. Headed your way, Helen, Absolutely. right now. And, and, and it's also an honor to be here with Les Payne as well. As a, as a kid growing up in going to junior high in Port Jeff here on Long Island, delivering Newsday, by the way. Used to read Les Payne all the time. Wanted to be Les Payne in yeah. some way. At least I got to meet him, and I'm proud and privileged to call him a friend. So thank you. Thank you both so much today. Yeah. It's a really nice day out, so we're standing in between <laughs> you and that nice day. So what do you say we do this program? Because there's some really important honors to give out to. And we should also mention that the Fair Media Council's Folio Awards is being taped for broadcast by WVVH-TV, Hamptons Television. So Folio can be seen from Montauk to New York on television and around the globe on the Hamptons Television webcast as well as YouTube. So be careful what you say when you come up here. Time to get on with the awards and time to bring out our first pair of presenters, former colleagues of mine over at WNBC-TV, David Ushery and Linda Beccaro. Coming up, guys. The first award that David and I will present is in the radio category of breaking news story in a regularly scheduled newscast. Oh, yes. The Folio Award goes David? to... David? We do this every day. The Folio <laughs> Award goes to WCBS News Radio 880 for their story on a tornado strikes Long Island. Let's listen to a radio call. Just been confirmed it was a tornado that touched down in Suffolk County this morning. WCBS reporter Sophia Hall joins us live from Islip Terrace with the details. Michael Wiley from the National Weather Service says the tornado touched down for about a half a mile here on the North Service Road in Irish Avenue in Islip Terrace, leaving signs twisted in half, trees picked up from the ground and thrown, and the roof of a law office sliced off. It looks like someone actually took a knife to it. For WCBS News Radio 880, Mike Zaranax, and congratulations to Mike Zaranax, Sophia Hall, and the WCBS News team. Congratulations. <laughs> Now we turn to the category of television, science, health, or environment news. And we're happy to say WNBC has earned a folio for Greg Sorgel's story on shaky ground, edited by John Albertson. Let's just take a quick look. It's a common sight in Bayshore. Underground test wells being dug or checked. Some of those wells located outside schools and playgrounds. It's the byproduct of what happened for close to 100 years at this now abandoned 11-acre Keyspan site. Now a plume of both known and possible carcinogens stretches about a mile south through the heart of town. The plume is located below ground so that there are no pathways of contact. There's no health risk. Despite Keyspan's assessment, this 2003 company PowerPoint presentation obtained by News Channel 4 calls the Bayshore site and others like it Keyspan's greatest public risk. It says the problem may require the temporary relocation of residents or even the acquisition of homes in the area. Stephen Phillips is suing Keyspan as well, claiming the plume has left his property worthless, killing shrubs and contaminating a creek where his three sons swam for years. Not once did they ever knock on the door or send a letter saying, you know, there's a problem here, maybe stay out of the water. Still, a State Department of Environmental Conservation report from March of this year paints a different picture claiming Keyspan has made progress in its cleanup. And congratulations, WNBC accepting is Mike Fitzsimmons, our assistant news director accepting on his behalf. Hello, Mike. Now let's see who's won in the editorial category for newspapers, and it is Free Island Tide for their editorial on Keeping the Bay Alive by Elaine Kiesling Whitehouse. <laughs> Elaine 
Kiesling, White House and Fire Island Tide. Lane. Next, we take you to another newspaper winner where the Long Island Press scores a win for its story, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, as reported by Michael M. Martino, Jr. Accepting is Michael M. Martino, Jr for the Long Island Press. Now it is time with this, this is a short presentation, time for David and me to sign off. Thanks for coming out. It's wonderful to see all of you again. It's great to see old friends, new friends. It's wonderful to be here. It, it is indeed. Congratulations to our colleagues. And OK, now we are going to welcome up colleagues from Fox 5, anchors Jody Applegate and Reed Lamberty. Also on separate sides, I see a theme here. Thank you very much for having us. Yes, the first award that Reed and I will present is in the newspaper or magazine category for a feature story under 2,000 words. And the Foley Award goes to Canvas Magazine for a Sharon Leesenbach story called The Eco Shell Game. for Canvas Magazine, editor Diana Murphy. Great job. In fact, this is the first time that Canvas Magazine has earned a Folio Award. So congratulations. All right, now we're going to turn to television in the category of investigative journalism in a regularly scheduled newscast. WNBC wins a Folio for my good friend Carolyn Gossoff's story called Slush Funds, shot and edited by Jim Zoltowski, Jr. Let's take a quick look at a clip. Your neighborhood soccer team may be a worthy cause, but should donations be coming from the tax rolls? Suffolk County Executive Steve Levy thinks legislators are doling out public money to private groups like soccer and Little League simply to get reelected. I don't know of many other county governments that have a slush fund to the tune of $500,000 per legislator that they can just throw around at their total discretion. Levy says what started as modest spending has mushroomed into a personal bankroll. More than half a million dollars per lawmaker this year. That's a lot of dough to throw around. The money goes to arguably good causes, firehouses, community groups, youth clubs. The junk is included with the good stuff. What does he consider junk? Levy's chief deputy, Paul Sabatino, says he's vetoed some of the more frivolous requests, like Knicks tickets for a youth group, a Christmas show for an Italian lodge. In fact, the lawmakers charge they're funding worthy causes that the county executive himself supported when he was a legislator. And now let's see who's won the radio category for editorial or public affairs issues. None other than WALK 97.5 FM's Donovan for her piece on Island Assignment Aid Suit. Let's listen. This past February, Long Island AIDS activists stood shoulder to shoulder with Nassau County Executive Tom Swazi to announce a joint lawsuit against the Federal Department of Health and Human Services. The suit has to do with new legislation that changed the formula for funding aid service organizations nationwide, leaving our region with a 50 percent cut in funding. Uh, correct. And uh, uh, Thursday's Child uh, is a very small agency, an effective agency. Uh, we had but almost 75% of our budget was wiped out as of March 1st. The government reneged on a deal made with Senators Clinton and Schumer back in December. Donna, congratulations. <laughs> Coming up next, we have the best cultural, artistic, educational, or religious news story in a newspaper. And that win goes to the Long Island Press for its story, Gambling with Tradition, by Jed Morey. Accepting the Folio Award is Jed Morey. Thought I'd put a dramatic pause there. Congratulations, Jed.
Well, uh, thank you all so much for coming out today. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a treat to mix and mingle with a lot of our colleagues who, uh, Kate was saying it earlier, often we don't get to meet our competitors because they are on the air at the same time we are. So it's a pleasure to see all of them and all of you. We are going over to John Muller. And Sukanya Krishnan. Yes. Both from Channel 11. Come on up, folks. Let's get to it, Scott. Let's do it, babe. All right, uh, the first award John and I will present is in the radio category for a continuing news story in a regularly scheduled newscast. All right, the folio goes to WLIUFM Southampton for the evening report with Connie Conway. The State Health Department has sent letters to more than 600 patients who may have been infected by the doctor's double-dipping practices. As for Bookstaver, he says he's taking life one day at a time. I have my good days, bad days. You know, for a while I was doing pretty good, but now, you know, the bad days are starting to be a little bit more often. You know, you know, throwing up all over again, constant tired. You know, you don't want to go anywhere because you never know when it's going to flare up. Accepting for WLIU-FM Southampton is Connie Conway. All right, we now turn to uh, television in the category of continuing news in a regularly scheduled newscast. The winner is WNBC for Greg Circle's story, Beyond the Drowning Pool. Let's take a look. Raymond Muniz's grief was obvious as he returned home after the drowning death of his bright-eyed three-year-old son, Anthony. My nephew was a really good kid. He was bright, tremendously funny, energetic, just an all-around good kid. A good kid who police and neighbors say loved to climb and often wandered from his Auburn Road home. To block any more escapes, police say his mother had placed a gate and large dresser in his bedroom doorway. But early this morning, he still got out just after his mom had checked on him, found him asleep, and then returned to her own bedroom. To get to that pool, police say, Anthony walked to an adjoining yard, then scaled a four-foot fence. He had made his way here just a day earlier, but was found safe and sound. This time, however, his mom and a neighbor discovered his body in the pool's deep end. They said he saw the ladder. You know, he was intrigued by the ladder. Police say the area around the pool was properly fenced, all required safety precautions were in place. They just weren't enough to stop a curious, determined toddler. All right, congratulations again to WNBC and Greg Sergal. Now let's turn to investigative journalism, news story category for newspapers. It's the Long Island Press earning a Folio Award on its story, Sick Puppies, reported by Christopher Tawarski and Timothy Bolger. Accepting the award is Christopher Tworski, and congratulations to him. In the radio category for an expanded feature story, the folio goes to Walk 97.5's piece by Donna Vaughn on Long Island Assignment Witness Project. Let's listen. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is about to begin. It's coming up in October, and it's a time when activists, survivors, and health experts work together to get out the word about breast health and the importance of early detection. Getting the word out to minority communities is part of that task, and that's where the Witness Project of Long Island comes in. For African-American women, breast cancer uh, at a younger age, under age 40, is more prevalent in the African-American community than in the Caucasian community. So and accepting the folio is Donna Vaughn. And that's it. John and I have to say goodbye. So, Kanye and John, thank you so much. Well done. All right. Right now, we're going to bring up two members of the all-name team in broadcasting. That's two the, right. Two of the prettiest names there are. Uh -huh. Veronica Contreras and Jorge Ramos from Telemundo. Telemundo. The first award Jorge and I will present is for television enterprise reporting. The Polio Award goes to WNBC for Caroline Gossip's story, Field of Dreams.
them high five. Yeah. yeah. Challenger Little League is well established all over the country. In fact, hundreds of children are enrolled right here on Long Island with a wide variety of disabilities. But the Roslyn Rangers children, well, they all have autism. And that creates special challenges and special achievements. Go! When they first came out here, and we had kids running off into the outfield, into all different places. And now, by and large, they're really focused at coming to the plate, hitting the ball, knowing which way to run the bases. It's just incredible that my son can participate in Little League like other typical children. Accepting for WNBC is Michael De Judas. Congratulations to you, Michael. So now we will present the only internet winner of the day for a local story or issue that received expanded coverage for, found only on the internet. The winner of this category is iSlip TV for Waldo Cabreras, where saw folks $300 million. <laughs> I need to know uh, the address of your nearest hiring center for day laborers. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to figure out what exactly do you need. Mr. Ortiz um, is asking Suffolk County to uh, create a hiring center for day laborers, people who want work just for the day uh, instead of standing in the streets. Uh -huh. we're, we're thinking, well, if, if Mr. Ortiz wants us to do that in Suffolk County, then you definitely, definitely must have a hiring center in your community because there's no way that he wants us to do something that he himself hasn't done. Okay, so so can you give us the address of your hiring center? Congratulations to Icelip TV and Waldo Cabrera, a first-time folio winner. Now, radio has a winner in the category of feature story in a regularly scheduled newscast. The folio goes to WCBS News Radio 880 for Mike Serenak's piece on I Want an Education. Let's listen. Seventeen-year-old Edwin Gallo's goal is simple. I want to go to school and graduate and get my diploma. But Lyndon, her school officials, had been refusing to enroll Gallo until his uncle, whom he resides with, begins the process of legal guardianship, an expense the family has made clear they cannot afford. The school superintendent and registrar refusing to discuss the matter with this reporter. It's like my dreams are getting crashed right now because they won't let me, um, they won't accept me into school. But that was Friday morning. By Friday afternoon, several hours hours after my inquiries, school officials, without explanation, decided to drop the guardianship requirement. Mike Cerniak. Everyone at Telemundo 47 sends their best wishes to all of the folio winners. Y nos vemos esta tarde a las seis en Noticiero 47, trabajando para ti. How do you like that? Working for you. He Telemundo said I'll 47. see you tonight at 6 and 11 on Telemundo. Okay, so watch tonight. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, yes. my nine's Audrey Puente yeah, yeah, and Mike friend. Gilliam. Come on up, guys. Yeah. The first award we will present is for a television feature in the long form. Now, the Folio Award is going to WLIW for a ticket, Photo at Henry Viscardi School, hosted by Laura Savini and produced by Charlotte Cote. Let's take a look at it. our children can't get out. They can't experience what other children experience, like go to the theater, go to music productions. So bringing the artists here enables them to have those same experiences that other children have. What we are doing is working with teaching artists. I try to tap into a way to get them to be expressive and to find instruments or ways that they can sing that helps them to um, improvise in a way that's most comfortable for them. Kim, for example, was working today with that sound beam, which is just that wonderful device where just through the movement, music is created. So that, in a sense, just a hand movement, an eye movement is composing music. It's a phenomenal experience for kids that will never be able to play a guitar, play a, a regular instrument like a drum or anything. They, they can experience those same composing experiences. 
accepting for WLIW is Charlotte Cote. Congratulations, Charlotte. Our next category is also in television for a feature story and a regularly scheduled newscast. The Folio Award winner is WNBC with Greg Sergel's story, Rosie's Return Flight. That was produced and edited by John Albertson. Let's have a look at that one. Planes like this one are often available for viewing here at the American Air Power Museum, but today this one was put back into service for a special flight to honor those Rosie the Riveters, women who helped make thousands of planes right here on Long Island during World War II. Those flyboys made it home because of women like these, so-called Rosie the Riveters, who during World War II took the place of men on the assembly lines that produced the planes that helped win the war. 85-year-old Connie Mancuso built Hellcat fighters at Grumman with five brothers at war. 93-year-old Sophie Saro was also at Grumman, leaving handwritten notes in the finished planes for the crew members who would later fly them. We set the pace for women to, to work outside of the home. Are you yeah. proud of that? I certainly am. And on this day, a symbolic flight to honor these amazing women. An affirmation, the ladies say, of what they believed all along. I always knew we were just as good as any man, <laughs> and I proved it. Accepting the Foley Award for the Man of the Hour, Greg Sorgel, is the wonderful Anna Carbonell. Now we take you to the last award of the day. The last category is for newspaper coverage of science, health, or environmental news. The folio goes to the Long Island Press for its story, Quirky, reported and edited by Robbie Wolliver. Accepting the folio for the Long Island Press is Michael Martinez. Thank you, Michael. Well, Mike, it's time for us to sign off here. Yes, We're going to head over to our place in New Jersey for and tonight. And it promises to be a good time, so all are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we also want to congratulate all the inter uh, winners on behalf of My9 for a, a great competition and a wonderful job on all of these pieces. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you for having us. We would like to thank everyone for being here today, and we'd like to thank everyone for taking part, as well as a congratulations to all of the Foley Award winners. Another round of applause. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for our folio presentation. For WVVH-TV, I'm Ernie Shamizi. See you next year here at the Folio Awards. <laughs>